Um, but ultimately, you know, the sentiment is that you, you know, the, the, there's, there is a shift on the horizon or a potential shift, you know, on the horizon um, now with the Bank of Japan monetary policy. And, and that calls into, you know, question the, I guess, uh, the, the convergence trade idea, right? So convergence, and again, uh, talking to Moses about it, or mentioning it to Moses, is is more, um, you know, whereas all these other central banks are pretty much looking to um, uh, tail off, you know, their interest rate hikes, right, coming to the end of the cycle. Now, for ages, the Bank of Japan was doing something like this. And then now, potentially, it's looking like you know, that might start to happen. So as, you know, the market typically does is it's forward looking, it's now starting, this is what you saw, you know, um, yesterday is a, a pricing now of, you know, the move, right? It surprised the markets, the markets hadn't priced in, you know, the, the this, you know, this move to the upside. Yeah, well, it moved to the upside, but, you know, the potential for, and I'm not saying that they're going to, you know, hike, you know, any significant amount, or they might do, right, who knows, but the fact that they're even starting their hiking, potentially starting a hiking cycle, the market now has to price the value of the Japanese yen and what it potentially may look like in the future, right? So this is where, and this is ultimately what fundamental analysis is about, is understanding future present and future value, yeah, potential value. And so these moments don't come around every single day or even every single week, right? People say, oh, what, what are the fundamentals for the day? Or what's the fundamentals for the week? You know, these types of, you know, shifts in um, policy, um, again, happen, um, you know, uh, they do happen, but it's it's a rare event. But when it does happen, this can now become a trade idea that you can get in on for, you know, a quarter or two, you know, three to six to nine to 12 months, depending on obviously how it starts to play out. Right. And so that's what's happening right now. And you're seeing, obviously, the, the yen start to react. So trade idea, one of the trade ideas for 2023 you know, is actually now the beginning of the buying of um, of the yen. Yeah. So any pullbacks uh, on a yen pair, which, you know, again, because we're trading in pairs, you always want to look at if you're buying the yen and the yen is obviously the, the maybe the quote currency as it typically is for most if not all uh, of the pairs that we look at, right? Meaning that, you know, uh, the base currency, whether it's the dollar, whether it's the, you know, the pound, whether it's the euro, whether it's the Canadian dollar, whether it's the Australian dollar, right? Um, you're looking at obviously uh, uh, short trades, right? Pressing sell on your broker to, to buy uh, the yen. Now, you know, the question now becomes if I'm buy if I want to be a buyer of the yen, which of these pairs or which of these currencies is going to be the weakest uh you know to, to trade it against, right? Because you don't ultimately want to. I mean, although you know, pretty much the, the yen is going to strengthen against all of them, <laughs> you know, uh, I think because it's such a major shift you know, it's pretty much just take your pick, right? <laughs> Which one you want, actually want to get involved in. But you can kind of niche down. You don't want to obviously over risk. You don't want to just stop, you know, buying the end against every single thing. Um, you know, which one or which two or three of these is going to be the one that you think or the ones that you think are going to be the ones that will run furthest, you know, and what pretty much springs to mind at the moment is going to be, you know, the, the, the pound and potentially the euro. And of course, you've got commodity currencies as well. And I'm going to talk about commodity currencies a bit later. But um, for me, the, the, I think the number one candidate um, for, for, for a pair now and that I'm going to be very uh, bearish on. I mean, I'm already bearish on the pound anyway, but, um, and I was looking to get involved in, in this pound. And I thought it would have come up over Christmas. You know what I mean? I think if the, if the, if the Bank of Japan didn't do what they did, I think it, you know, the pound might have drifted up over Christmas to the, to the highs of the daily range. I did send a chart, you know, things uh, showing what I thought was going to happen. And then I was hoping that either I could get in there or, or on some sort of stop hunt above the level, 
but obviously, you know, prices didn't get up there, right? The, the yen shocked the market and then we ended up going down here. So now it's just looking for some sort of pullback into a supply zone before, you know, potentially getting, um, you know, short. But the, uh, the the pound yen is definitely, yeah, that's, they say, Alexandra says the pound yen looks like the best divergence. Absolutely. You know, I can I spot that a mile away, right? It's just, that's you know that's it right of course you're probably going to you probably will see the 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 dollar yen um uh weaken and pretty much all uh currencies weaken against the yen because it's such a big move but again pick the few the, the couple that you think are going to have the 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 biggest um that were, were the biggest divergences and so that for me is the trade idea for 2023 